Do we do Louis? It's Louis. Yeah. yeah. Louis Bruno. Chief Bruno. Chief Bruno. Chief Bruno. Oh, here we go. <laughs> no, which one is it? I've never heard the Chief Bruno until today. Yeah, that actually started in Roswell. Did Pavel start it? No, no, I did not. It was in Rope Class. Yeah. Pavel started it. Trust. Nope, I did not. Somebody said, that's Chief Bruno. Is, it, said, is okay, that a takeoff of the Bruno. other Chief Bruno? Is that what they're playing off of? No, I hope not. <laughs> okay, yeah. not down with the customer oh, service. Is how that did, what's going on? How did how did that how did that come up then? Um, so we were in rope class, and uh, he asked a question. I think it was actually in reference to pretension back ties. And I gave pretty much the best answer you could possibly give. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so Pavel did and do this. Someone, no, I did not. Someone yells out, "Oh, Chief Bruno!" Because <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, that's exactly correct." Wow. Sweet. That's where it started. That, that is and the it's best been a, introduction we've had so far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. and it's been yeah. that for me that. since that day. So, I've never said anything but yeah. Chief Bruno. And to continue after that class, his the guy who said it, his nickname was uh, became after named after a lotion. So I, I think I won on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I came out of here, but yeah. I'm assuming we'll have to wait. Yeah, until the red lights yeah. go off. Yeah, <laughs> we put an explicit thing on here from time to time. We I think put we an put explicit on all thing on every one. Okay, we do it do on every really? one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I was actually surprised at the last one. Why? Because uh, we think, said some bad words. Well, uh, I said a lot, which <laughs> it's not. Well, that actually came out of the discussion after the podcast. We, we weren't we, even recording. I mean, we were recording, but we weren't intending to. Yeah, use we it weren't intending. Wasn't an episode. I was very liberal with my right. normal language. <laughs> I thought it was great. I'm not going to lie to you. I, thought I, did, I do, too. I thought it was a, a, a very valuable discussion. I think there's some discussion. good nuggets in that one, man. We could have done better. We were I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back on track. Yeah. So we're talking to Louis Bruno today, uh, who has an extensive background, not just in ropes, but uh, in all facets of technical rescue. And uh, he's with uh, at least two major metropolitan fire departments in Atlanta. And uh, we really were sitting down to talk about planning versus prepare, uh, preparation. How long have you been in the fire service? This will be my eighth year. Damn, is that it? <laughs> that's what I said. But you jumped goes in by with both fast. feet, though. It, it goes it, by well, fast. You know what? You, you, that's a great point. It's yeah. not how long is how you spent that time. Because so many times you'll hear that about 20 versus 10 or whatever. It's like, yeah, but how did you spend that time? Yeah, he spent it busy. Yeah. What did you do before you got on the fire service? A few different trades, uh, pressure washing, and then um, doing metal fabrication for custom roofs, and then um, played hockey my whole life before that. Oh, I forgot about that part. Yeah. Yeah. So you're from Atlanta? Nope. Born and raised <laughs> in Chicago. <laughs> Far from it. Yeah. 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 Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Born and raised in Chicago. and. Okay. Uh, Lived in Minneapolis for a year playing hockey at the end of my high school year. And then uh, moved to Toronto, Canada after that. Wow. Played hockey up there for a year. And um, finished up. I came actually to Atlanta, back to Atlanta, um, playing for Kennesaw State. And then left college after my first year and pursued the fire department. How much, how much similarities are there in hockey to the fire service? Or did it help you? Because I... Um, well, so, uh, actually it helped a lot tremendously, I'd say, because there's, you know, the, the team aspect of it and everyone has different roles on the team. Um, and the more people understand their roles in that situation, the better your team is. And the better they are at those individual roles. Absolutely. Yeah. And if it goes sideways, you can beat the snot out of each other. Well, I was saying, he's probably got Knock really each other's teeth out, too. right? Keep each other in check. Yeah. Or should I not say <laughs> Maybe not. Well, I'm fine I mean, with it. it happens in hockey. Uh, yeah. I'm not saying it happens I mean, in the fire. He's probably got hockey. some uh, pretty good ribbon that goes on. you got to be pretty Oh, man, skin. the locker room The oh, locker room's yeah. a special place. It's like being at the station. Yeah. It's yeah. where the bonds are formed. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's get to a question and see what happens. Uh-oh. Uh, what is, what is your opinion of what the difference between preparation and planning is? Um, so planning is, um, I think it applies more to things that are in your control, um, things that you can control and, and plan for that you know are coming. Being prepared is kind of what you do in prior to and being ready for anything that goes. Um, 
and it's the actions of what you do to be ready for whatever decisions you have to make. It's not necessarily, it's, it's, it's what happens when you deviate from the plan, whether you're prepared. So um, how much do you think of daily activity going to a fire call is plans and how much is preparation? Because, I, I mean, people, people on the truck have roles. Yeah. Is that preparation or is that right. part of the plan? So, so a lot of it is uh, preparing. I'd say more so preparing. But to prepare well, you have to come up with a plan. And um, a lot of it comes down to basically muscle memory when you're coming down, going down the road, going to a fire. There's things that you can tell, you can tell by the way someone's stuff is laid out on the truck, whether they've planned or they haven't planned. Oh, and that's interesting. The way I lay my stuff out is I've got, you know, everything in a certain order according to what we're going to be doing. And... When I get on the truck, it's muscle memory me putting on my gear and what I have to do and get ready so that when we get off the truck, we can just go right into the plan. So how much does it mess with you if somebody screws with the way you got it laid out? Uh, a lot. I was like, I'm very observant with my gear and if it gets touched, you know, anybody knows if their gear gets touched that someone's messed with it. So you got to move it back and get it situated so that you're ready to go. Because there's a lot of things going through your head. You know, like you said, you're planning right. in your head. Okay, I'm going to get there. When we get off the truck, if it's this, you know, we're going to go ahead and grab this or we're going to grab this because they want topside bent and, you know, making sure you grab the right things. You don't want to think about where's my glove or where's, you know, my extrication glove if we're going to extrication. Where's my glasses? You know, right. that stuff's laid out, ready to go so that it's muscle memory. You're putting it on. You're thinking about what's what's coming out, the radio traffic, what's you know, the scene being laid in front of you. So you're kind of preparing yourself mentally, I think, um, because you've already sorted out the small details. Right. So when you, if you're looking at something other than a fire, let's say it's technical rescue, let's say it's a rope rescue on the back of Stone Mountain or something like that, mm -hmm. and it's not something that you've got muscle memory for necessarily for, the, for whatever it is that you're looking at. Right. I mean, you've got muscle memory on ropes and tying knots and all that, but... Sure. As far as how you're going to go up and get somebody off of a rock ledge or something like that, you know, you got to come up with a plan. Right. And at what point does that plan, when do you, when do you decide to deviate from the plan? Well, so there's, there's already a certain level of planning prior to the arrival on an incident like that anyway. So we've already decided who's going to be the rescuer, who's going to be, um, you know, setting up things. You know, there's, there's roles and things that we're planning already. That are going into plan before we even planned get there. like yeah that's what weeks ago or planned in the truck the on the way there in the truck on the way there because you don't know who's going to be on the truck that day so right. um, so yeah typically in the morning you know we're we're going to plan roles you know just like who's grabbing what tools and you guys do that for each one of the technical rescue disciplines uh, or yeah. as it comes up yeah we have certain people who are stronger at certain types of rescues than others so we know kind of who's the go-to guy as far as a rescuer in that situation. So I'm not exactly a con space guy, so I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Um, why not? <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's physics a, thing. Yeah, this is a <laughs> physics thing. <laughs> so I'm curious with, with, would you consider yourself a methodical planner? Like you like to plan things out? Um, I like to be organized. Okay. Yeah, uh, as far as like, like small stuff, having the small stuff that you don't want to have to think about on the way to something bigger. So f for those that are listening and even myself being in special operations and knowing I like to be organized, I like to be very well planned out, but we often find that you have a plan, the other person has a plan, the third person's got a plan, and the fourth por person's got a plan, and they're not all the same plan. Absolutely. So... How do you deal with that? Are you flexible or do you find that, and talking specifically with special operations or with people that are like you, are you flexible or do you have a hard time when your plan, you feel, hey, I have a plan here. Why are we going with that plan? Right. I think you have to be flexible because someone may see something differently than you do and they may see something that you overlook. So you have to be flexible and it's hard to sit up top of 
a building or something and argue of why whose plan is better, but you kind of just have to go with, you know, pull the ideas and then let your leader kind of say, all right, this is the route we're going, and everyone get on board and do it. So you can't really yep. – there's not a lot of time for back and forth on that, and that all goes into leading up to it. You know, before that incident happens, all that stuff is being talked about and prepared for. Um, you know, when we we just did a drill off of the bridge where we were doing raises and lowers and different uh, rope drills and just talking about different types of scenarios, you know, like we're like, well, in real life, we'd be able to close this whole road off and we'd be able to set up something differently than what we're doing right now. So you have to kind of think about different different aspects of one that you can't just train and do that's the way it's going to go you have to be i agree about all of your options of i think you hit something real important that i don't want people to go past on this whole thing which is you got to get together and prepare go train go figure this stuff out so the plan can actually come into play once you go out to the incident where you've actually worked some of this stuff out that's where i think you build trust Mm-hmm. And that's where I think you see what each other's capabilities are, you know, your strengths, your weaknesses. And then once you go out to an incident, then you're better prepared. The plan can kind of fall into place. You're a lot more flexible because you guys have gotten together. You've kind of done it. You've, you've prepared for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I agree, flexibility should be present. But it, it, for these type of personalities that are very prepared, very planned, Sometimes we'll see that when they all meet in a certain place, there's not a lot of flexibility. Everybody has the way of doing it. So you, you, when you said everybody had their own plan, I, mm -hmm. I heard that as being negative possibly. It all. mm -hmm. So here's here. I want to read something. This is something that uh, Jocko Willink wrote uh, in extreme ownership. He says, leaders must delegate the planning process down the chain as much as possible to key subordinate leaders. Team leaders within the greater team and frontline tactical level leaders must have ownership of their tasks within the overall plan and mission. Team participation, even from the most junior personnel, is critical in developing bold, innovative solutions to problem sets. Decentralized command. Right. Right. But but like I said, it, it sounded like everybody having their own plan was a was a negative, which I agree it is a negative, but in it some dep- degree, it it's a strength. So it depends, like Bruno's putting it out there. If you frame it up like, hey, we've trained together, we've prepared together, you come, and there's four different plans, and you have good leadership, that decentralized type command where we come together, and, and even to whoever's in charge to go, hey, why don't we go left? I, f- I feel that if we go left, we're going to avoid this. And somebody's like, I really think we should go right. But everybody's kind of trusting that. It's when it gets to a one, somebody makes that we're going left, boom, doesn't listen to any of the other directions. It could be negative. It should not be. It should always be a very quick, okay, there's multiple ways to skin this cat. Let's pick plan A. And let's go with plan A till plan A doesn't go and then go to plan B. Well, it seems not a democracy. Everybody doesn't get a vote. No. If you do, that's where it's problematic. When you got five plans showing yeah. up and everybody's trying to implement their own individual plan. So, that's and that's where you lean towards the negative side of it. But <clears throat> like Bruno's saying, if they go out to a, if this team's working together and we get a confined space job, Bruno's probably not going to be the entry person. We've kind of predetermined that we've, pre-planned it to a certain degree to go if if this is the crew we got today he's not the one going in you plan right. for the known and you prepare for the unknown mm-hmm. I, I agree with you hatch to a certain extent i don't do, i don't agree that scenes i are, don't know it's going to be you go ahead <laughs> keep bringing it keep going i'm ready for it <laughs> i got my big boy pants on i today. agree that scenes cannot be democratic but i think that's a sliding scale and i think it slides based on how much time you have to act so if it's something with people hanging off balconies, it's a very undemocratic scene. One person's going to say, here's how we're going to do this. If it's somebody on a rock ledge who is safe, but we got to get them off and we've got time to figure it out, I think there is more of a democracy where people get to speak up, say, hey, this is what I think we should do. There's more consideration. There's more gathering of information. So it, that, to me, seems more democratic. 
In the end, one person's going to make a decision. Exactly. I'm, I, I I'm not saying that. the input will not be given, okay. but one person is going to set the plan, and we're going to move in that direction, and all others have to shut up. So, just out of curiosity, how often, have, Bruno, have you had the opportunity, or do you feel you've had the opportunity where you've actually been able to put your input I give my input no matter what, whether it's <laughs> it's always a democracy. <laughs> Doesn't okay. mean it's no, no, but that's I know, but where you put your input in yeah. and you actually deviated the plan that was happening, because to me that's like the epitome of that de- decentralized command is when you get down there, and it's almost always the, the democracy where somebody goes, whoa, 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 we don't want to walk into this. Everybody always has a voice. It's just. How often do you find yourself, or people should find themselves where they actually do have a voice and a say so, but how often do you find then the opposite where it's like your input is not being taken in at all? It depends on who's taking in the input. We've had, I've had it both ways uh, where input's been given and we decided to go that route. And then same thing where it was disregarded where that's good, but we're going to go this route anyway. Have you had it both ways. have you been in charge of some of these scenes? Were you the one that ultimately was making the decision? Not the ultimate decision, no. It's coming. I'm, I'm, yeah, I was going to say still it's, down it's, there. It's I'm coming. still down there it's on the coming. scale. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, um, the more the more you work together, um, the the more you'll find that even if everybody gives input, a lot of it is in the same direction. The more you work together, the more it, when you don't work together as much, you're not really all you're all on different pages. Right. Eventually, you guys come and merge to the same pages where, you know what, someone presents an idea. Hey, I was thinking the same thing. And you'll see that more as you work together, I think. And that becomes a little bit more difficult with. Some revolving doors or some situations that we're in, whether it's department station moves or whatever it is where, you know, when you don't have that station and that group that's been together for a long time that just kind of move forward and they know how to anticipate the next move and you're at another station or you just been moved and that's not there. Well, that's definitely going to play into it. I think <clears throat> I, I may turn this a little bit. I think what starts to play into it more than anything is the particular leadership at that particular station. Because if that leadership there doesn't have that ability to let you introduce your ideas, right. And it's just, no, we're doing it my way all the time. Right. It stifles that whole growth. It stifles mm-hmm. that, that operation, stifles your development. Sure. So I think that has a whole lot to do about what happens at that particular station as far as how are the other plans taken. Absolutely. Um, we've had some, I've been fortunate to work for nothing but great leaders. So um, and I've seen the way they worked and the way the decisions are made. And I've never felt like my input was not warranted. I'd like to say how I did, them that. How, and I'm going to challenge you here. How did you know they were great leaders? If you've never worked for anything but great leaders, what are you gauging them against? Ooh, these um, are the tough ones. Mm-hmm. I would say for myself, I'd say I, it, they motivate me to want to give me or want me to give them my best always and to you know constantly make their job easier by handling the things that I'm tasked to handle. How do you think they've done that? How have they instilled that in you? Um by uh, giving me not necessarily a voice, but giving me, you know, a role, knowing that I have a role in this part of the team, and um, allowing me to do my best that I can do to be the best at that position. Trust. Trust, one hundred percent. Yeah. Well, and I mean, Foundation. and I, 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 and I agree. You know, I mean that building that trust is important, but then again, you have those realities that we can't keep groups homogenous and and un this is the wrong word polluted with outside you know somebody's going to have to fill in at the station at some point and we're going to have to send somebody off at some point and you know that that does break that uh that cohesive sure group and they're probably not as strong as they were when you had that whole group together but it's just uh you know and in a way if you if you never changed it out it'd be horribly insular and then you know it would actually end up growing weaker. Stagnant. Yeah, you know. Right. Yeah, I no, I think that's a very good point. I mean, the you know, the, the big thing is attitude is when like we get a new leader or someone in is the attitude that they come with is um is huge a huge part in how well they're going to do. And um 
most recently was well not most recently but prior had a captain come to us with zero technical rescue training but it was his attitude and understanding that he was humble didn't come here saying he knew more because he's a captain you know it was he was like you guys are already good at what you do i'm just here to get on board and be able to be a leader of this team so how much were you in that democratic spirit you're giving him your your opinion he doesn't necessarily and i mean i've I've been in that position as a battalion chief on in charge of a scene where, you know, I'm not a hazmat tech. It's a hazmat call. I'm the battalion chief. I've got hazmat techs on scene. I'm listening to them, you know. So how much did you find yourself being heard by that individual who didn't have the expertise, you know? A lot. Yeah. A lot more, actually, than I normally would have. Right. Um, because of how new he was to this aspect. Um, but... You know, every person at that station knows who to lean on for certain types of things. And um, like I said, I, would I think that's a, I, you're hitting on something that I think is a, a, a huge. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to call it, but I, I've right. always said everybody in the station ought to have a specialty. Mm-hmm. Everybody ought to have something that when something comes up and Good somebody man. says, who do we know that does this really well? There's somebody in the right. station that does it. Yeah, right. somebody should always have ownership over that. Exactly. Uh, you know? Going back just a little bit so we don't move past something that you said. I know that the and for some, we always end up going in this whole leadership direction because, you know, these words that come up, of trust and attitude and everything else always seem to circle around. But it also has a lot to do with not necessarily the leadership, but how that crew decides they're going to treat the leadership. So sure, you guys have somebody that comes in that shows a little bit of humility, and you're like, you know, we'll work with this person. Seems like they're humble. Oh, they could have they, froze them out. They could have froze them out and shoved them right out the door. So mm-hmm. they just, for me, it goes to show your reputation starts not when you start the job. When you fill out that application and you start the entire process, your reputation is starting, and you may end up in a place with a bunch of, Type A, just high speed, low drag individuals that can make or break you within weeks or a month. You could be out of that station if it isn't for the fact that it's almost like that reverse leadership role where from the bottom, they decide whether or not you're going to be successful. Right. Mm -hmm. He could have went in there with every skill set. And I've also seen this uh, play out. Every skill set, perfectly qualified and walks in there. And from and from the bottom up, they never they never let them succeed. Right. So uh, it's interesting that you say that. I know one person that was assigned to uh, one of the uh, special ops units in the metro, and he came in with almost no experience. His humility and his attitude, he was one of the best. I could not believe how quickly this person grasped every single skill, rose to expert power in it. But everybody was just backed him 100% and was just, it was weird, man. He just did it so perfectly and so seamlessly that he rose to be like one of the most respected uh, heavy rescue bosses in the metro area. And he didn't know anything. But the way that he came in with humility, his attitude, and the crew immediately stood behind him and, and raised him up. It was pretty cool to watch. So I think that's an important note that you bring up is, for if you're in a leadership role, your success, yes, it has to do with your ability to lead, but sometimes it has to do with the leaders below you that you may not acknowledge as leaders or whether or not they decide they're going to allow you to lead and be successful leading or not. Yep. So, Louis, do you have a – we're going to edit out these silences. <laughs> uh, do you have an example, uh, a scene where you guys went in with a plan – and it very rapidly turned into the plan's not working and the preparation had to kick in. And, and Yeah. It's hard to think of them off, offhand. There's just right. so many that run together, and it seems like, you know, there's never – I haven't had a major one where – but okay. any time you have to pull out and go defensive, you know, your, right. plan has, your plan has gone to hell. So, you know, you have to pull out, regroup, you know, stabilize the scene – then go at it again but um yeah I, I can't think of any like a particular incident that sticks out in my mind right? do you think that there's such thing as over planning oh yeah 100 
because then you start to come become committed to what you're like. I put so much effort into this. We can't deviate away from this. You know, you've over planned yourself and now you're not ready to deviate from that. Spot on, man. <laughs> I hope I hope some of the people coming into the fire service or listening to that or even some that have been around for a while. Uh, that's something that I struggled with big time because being a planner, yeah, you are so committed to your plan because you've given so much thought and so much effort that you don't want to deviate from it because you put too much work into yeah, it. It goes yeah. back to that that's, conversation that's, that's we had before. Be but very, very so, careful. which which of them the two is more flexible, planning um, or preparations? Well, preparation, one hundred percent. And so, earlier, are you saying every call you go to goes to plan? No. So you do go so do preparations. Go into preparation mode. I think he just didn't have a, a glaring one, example. Oh, I see. You didn't have one. Yeah. So well, there is a quote. Um, Jedi tricks on him, Hatch. I this is, uh, <laughs> I see you staring at him. <laughs> this is Lawrence Gonzalez in the book Deep Survival, and he says, there is a tendency to make a plan and then to worship the plan, that memory of the possible future. But there is also a tendency to think that simply by putting forth more and more effort, we can overcome friction. Right. And that, that would be stick that, to plan, that stick plan, plan A. Plan. That's that stick into the plan and no matter and what. Un, you know, unwilling to deviate. Grind so if you're going to put weights on them, you know, planning versus preparedness and, you know, which, which one is going to be more? I would weighty. rather be more prepared than well planned. Why? Uh, because being prepared, you can be, adapt. You're ready to adapt. That's that flexibility. Right, mm-hmm. right. I think that's a key component of it. I mean, yes, we can sit there and, like I said, plan all day about the known. But we all know you could have seen, and there's tons of things yeah. you don't know, and you have mm-hmm. to be flexible and right. be able to adjust on the fly. Right. And those individuals that you know kind of look at it as just a checkbox, 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 you're staying in the plan right. mode and not going to the preparation right. part. I'm wondering if – That's a good point. Yeah, that, that's a great point because I'm wondering if people – you know, I'm glad we record this thing to go back to what we were talking about earlier, Bruno – if we only listen to our own. I know. If we listen to our own, we'd be so much better, but <laughs> or m- better confused. Be? Um, because something like that, even for me, I'm sitting here thinking, just grab a hold of this information. I am a huge planner. And then I will worship that plan. Because I, for me, planning equals preparation to a certain degree in certain things. So... Listen it to it to it here. It's a hundred percent correct. I will worship that plan because I put so much work into it. Uh, depending on what you're talking about, but you can almost apply it everywhere to go. That preparation, that muscle memory, that preparedness gives you more flexibility than planning does. Uh, you, it, it's just hopefully you're grabbing a hold of that if you're listening. That they're both great, but you're a hundred percent right. That planning. You can just worship that plan to a point of disaster and keep trying to make it fit. Make right. it fit. Let's see, I'm the opposite. I'm like, I got a loose plan for you'll, most things, and then I'm hurt. very much onto the I can wing it and, and do the prepared. No, I'm, I'm, I'm like. more like Pabell. I, I'll yeah. put a plan together, but I don't expect it. I don't remember who the who said it, but they said, you know, no plan uh, survives the first shot. You know, and. I know it's gonna, it's not going right. to go the so, way I want it to go. Exactly. So that's why I said the, I have a loose plan. Yeah, the yeah. whole boxing thing. The with Mike Tyson they, quote. I don't think he said yeah. it. Everybody, I, don't think uh, it I don't know he said Everybody it. Everybody has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. But, I mean, that's that's the case. That's I mean, you shot. can plan it all, but that's why I said mine are very loose. You know, it's going to be very basic or whatever because I know I'm going to have to do a lot of adjustments, so I'm all yeah. prepared. Look at, I mean, look at, look at how long they planned for uh, the invasion of Europe on D-Day. I mean, you're talking years of planning. Right, and then when the when the planes start dropping paratroopers on the coast and the boats are coming up, nothing went right. Nothing went right. <laughs> you know, I think sometimes, though, we, we may have a tendency to plan, singular plan, as opposed to plan with multiple exits on that plan to be able to deviate, which is well, I more what like I... think that's what you're saying. Just that basically, you just got a general framework of a plan. So right. right. Mostly your preparations. Well, plan A is through. a... Yeah. Yeah, but even with that being said, <laughs> there's still there's don't still know. a certain road that you don't deviate. You get to a certain place before you start going, well, I can go down road one, two, three, four, five. Uh and for me, I'm talking to myself here because I'm telling you, I will create these plans and in my mind I have already forecasted the end result for them all. And if uh I'm not cautious, and I'm sure I'm not the only one out there that's like that, you will fight the turn in the road. 
because no, this this was not in the plan. When somebody's actually <clears throat> trying to tell you, if you go the way you're going, Th- that's correct. That's ahead. There's a problem. I'm about to throw down the gauntlet. Part. I'm about to throw down the gauntlet right here. Oh boy, here we here go. It comes. <laughs> so plans are the hopes. policies. Plans are the policies. This is where we're going with the the known. And, you know, the guys have to be able to be prepared to deviate from that, to actually make whatever that plan is fit. To the guidelines. To the guidelines, exactly. And, and that's that's the component of all. everybody's like, well, I want to have flexibility. You 100% can have flexibility in what right. you can do because we can't write a policy for every single right. type of call. I read something about basically along those lines that rule, I mean, that preparing was more rules-based. I mean, uh, planning is more rules-based. Rules based. Mm-hmm. Preparation is the theoretics behind. Right, one's flexible and one's rigid. Go. Right. So it would go to Bruno or you that – just not necessarily just fire department. Are you more of the personality where you want to know what the rules of engagement are so you can stay within the guardrails? Or are you more, hey, I need to know what these rules are so I can <laughs> know, know when I'm jumping over the guardrail because I'm going to jump over the guardrail. I'm going to jump over the guardrail. Okay. Well, I was going to tag on that. So when you did your Iceland trip, did you plan that trip or did you prepare for that trip? So kind of what Hatch was saying, there was a loose plan. But we allowed for deviation in any direction. Basically, we booked like even to four, the point. I want this guy on my truck. We booked four <laughs> Airbnbs like in that. each corner of the country, and we, we were just like, let's do two days here, three days here, two days here, two days here, not knowing what we were going to do there. And you're the same way, or would you think you are the same way in the fire service that you are in your personal life? I would. It's a kind of a personality thing when it goes, when you're talking about plan versus prepared, it's the type of person I think too. Uh, I agree. My basement's full of shit. You know why it's full of shit? <laughs> I planned it to be that just way. No, no, it's I'm not plans. It. Are you it's a not plans. It's when I need something to do something around the house, I go buy a tool instead of just borrowing it. I go buy it because I'm like, hmm, <laughs> Three years from now, I might have to do this again. I better be prepared. So I've got I'll all this tell crap you so. in I don't my think basement. That's what that is. I that think is. some release you get from purchasing stuff. Quite possibly. <laughs> like buying a new vehicle every year or so. That, that, yeah, but says, hey, says the guy, you know, exactly. this guy over all here, pointing at Shane he's right got now. a brand new, he's had three vehicles in three years. I'm that's driving a 20 year old <laughs> truck. So, with what Bruno's saying, interestingly enough, I am, that's one of the few things that I am very different professionally than personal. Professionally, I like to be very well planned. I like to be forecasted. I like to have stuff in place. That doesn't mean I can't deviate. I think I've got a lot of flexibility, but I like to be planned. On my personal life, if we're going on a trip, I do not want that trip planned out. Mm. I do not want it. I just want to show up. But and enjoy that, myself. Is that personality right. or is that just vacation is supposed to be a yeah, vacation from life? It is, but some, some people... You're doing the opposite of what you do at work. Correct. So because I've created that in my work atmosphere to a certain degree where I've, I felt like I need to be planned, I don't want to do that in my personal life. Yeah. If we're going on vacation, you know, my wife's going to want, hey, she, she'll always say, we're so unprepared. Forgot a chair, forgot this, forgot the other, where I'm like... I just want to go and then we'll figure it out later. So it, it's just mm-hmm. interesting. You, yeah. you are pretty consistent where yeah. I am what you're describing. If I was to plan a trip, it's like, let's just go. We went to Italy. I literally didn't want to plan. Where are we sleeping? And we'll figure out the rest. And that's what we did. So but I have a hard time with right. that professionally. So some people, <laughs> you go to Iceland and I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm down with what you did, yeah. but I think it also comes at, if you had planned it more, it might've been cheaper, right? You lose some it's of hard, that flexibility. Iceland is expensive in general, but, but I mean, um, it, it, when you know, if I decide to take a helicopter ride over a glacier sure. that that day, yeah, you know, yeah. you you are giving up some of that flexibility. Sure. Bruno says in, he's in loaded, the, so it doesn't really matter. That's not where That's I'm going. With he, he's jobs. not connecting with it it's because he's I'm got a pocket full of money. Um, I, I, think I, I get you, what you're you saying. Can, you can say, "Oh, mm-hmm. I'm all in on prepared." Yeah, uh, you know, on preparation instead of planning, but there's a cost. It is there's a, there's a yeah. cost associated cost of, with it. Yeah, and there's things that you'll miss. You you know, if you don't research into <coughs> particular things that you, you know you'd like to do there, uh, you may miss it completely. Right, and uh, miss the opportunity of uh, going and seeing something you may not ever be back to see again. So um, there is a there's a little level of planning that you need to do. But like I said, I'm still very very loose on what. I, I do right. like the I did a, a scuba dive there and that was planned. I, I booked that ahead of time. How cold was that water? Uh, Thirty two degrees. <laughs> Stays, Negative. but the air temperature was fourteen degrees. So, so it was nice. <laughs> it, was <warm. laughs> it was relatively warm. <laughs> it was great. Um, 
But uh, yeah, I mean, those are there's certain things that when I get there, I know I want to do this when I'm there. So I put that into the plan. Right. But all those days in between, we literally got in the car and just went to uh, the one day we did an ice caving expedition across a glacier. And that was totally on a whim. Like we just went and we were like, hey, uh, we went to see a site. And on site, they had a tent there offering tours. And it just so happened that they didn't have an expedition for the next day. And the guy was really cool. He was from New Zealand and said, he said, hey, you know, if I take you into this cave with all these tourists and they're going to be mad at me. So he says, I'll take you on a little expedition that only the guides do. Wow. And, um, spent the whole day with them. So. Wow. so how much, I mean, obviously you were, you were wearing clothes for Iceland. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, how much did you have to be prepared for? Oh, so like part of that was, you know, they have specialty equipment that you have to use hiking across the glacier they got crevasses and all that stuff you can fall in so gave us ice axes and like the legit crampons not the little cheap ones you know all that stuff but they had all that for us um but it's kind of something that i'd like to do on my own sometime right but, but that takes a lot of a lot of prepping and, yeah a lot so of how, much, how much did you have to be planning. mentally prepared um, mentally, uh, you know, I enjoy being outside, so really it was easy for me. Some of the other guys don't, I wouldn't say do as many, like, tre- aren't up for treks like that as easy. But, right. um, yeah, definitely, it'll, it'll take it out of you. That was a long hike, long day, um, being out there all day. And then we had day packs that we had gear and spirit food and water in and everything that we were carrying. So I had cameras and drones and all that stuff, so I had, I had a little <laughs> extra weight. But... <laughs> I'm curious, as you get older, do you start planning more than you prepare? I think it's the opposite. You Really? I do. I, I, well, for me it is. And I, I, I think some of that comes with that freedom to do things on a whim. So if mm. you go professionally since you started to now, was there a time where you felt yourself preparing all the time? Not necessarily planning, just preparing. And then as you go through your career, that planning starts creeping in to the point where it balances. And then maybe your career even turns into more of a planning than preparation. You know what I'm saying? You're in the back of the truck. So I remember my first years, all I wanted to do is physically be prepared for anything, that type of thing. Planning wasn't, just thinking back, planning wasn't a huge part of my daily routine at work. It was all preparation, I think physical my, and mental preparation. I think my preparation, my, my bend towards preparation later in my career comes from experience. It comes from being in situations and realizing this isn't the end of the world. There is an answer to this and just reinforcing that over and over and over that, that flexibility is going to be benefit you and you're, you're going to, you know, we'll work with this. I think it, it, it's, lack of a better word, it's scarier when you're less experienced and you want plans and you want, tell me what I'm going to do on this scene. Do, you know. Bill today mm-hmm. plans a lot more than he prepares? No, he prepares a whole lot more than he plans. I think I planned more when I was younger. Shane? I don't know. Just sitting here, I hadn't, I hadn't considered that before. Well, I guess you didn't plan that, did you? No. <laughs> so I'm going to go with preparation. So you also preparation. I, I don't know. I'd have to. He's winging it. To it. So winging it. Do you find yeah, yourself, uh, Bruno, more right now, life. more prep or more <laughs> wing it. planning on where you're at? I, I was I, kind of thinking the same thing as far as the more experiences you have. The viewers can't see who you put pointed to. Subtle. <laughs> your, <laughs> it was better. before he says. <laughs> hey, Bruno. He, no, uh, he. he oh. I was pointing. Oh, I got you. <laughs> um, and not that I have a ton of experience, but. The more reps you get at something, like you said, it's it's harder. It's your 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 brain kind of dials down a little bit, and saying, "Okay, I can handle this." I know this isn't the plan, but we can. This isn't something that's crazy. We can't handle. I think that experience. That's not the end of the world. Into until you pull up on an interstate that's right. on fire, and then and then right. you're like, "Well, I haven't seen this before." Right. So hatch more plans. And I'm looking at hatch right now. Uh, I do more planning now than I do preparations. Really? Yeah. But, As but I get older, but you're a loose planner. I, uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm more comfortable with the prepared. But as I get older, I'm lean more towards the plan. Okay. 
you know, I'm getting close to retirement. I'm planning out what I'm going to do. What's the next step? Blah, 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 blah. So it's all planned stuff for me right now. Mm-hmm. But even at work, your daily routine at work, does it require more planning or preparation? Mm. I'd say to be effective, I have to do a lot of planning. I think be able to hit guys, all the marks that I need. Those guys that are in the station that get so pissed off when something comes up that day and they're like, you know, hey, we need you to go over and stand two hours in front of this building, you know, because this, you know, whoever called and they want you over there. And they're like, nah, we had this plan and this plan and this plan and this plan. Uh, that stuff doesn't piss me off anymore because I know it's going to come up. That's a great and it's point. Not, I'm not, it doesn't 100%. ruin my plan. I had a plan. Well, that's a great I point. We were do this stuff it today. goes back to what I was saying earlier that if people can wrap their mind around this for a minute, that, that is what pisses us off is we had a plan for today. And right. your plan just superseded my plan. We had all these plans, and all of a sudden is, hey, go out to, to this place and, and do whatever. So flexibility is key. And, and I can say this for myself, something that I've struggled with through the years have gotten to the point where I consider myself a very flexible individual right now. I still love planning. I'm still a planner. But you got to have flexibility. You have to be able to pivot when somebody supersedes your plan for the day and says, nope, you guys are planning on training at the bridge. We need you to go put up smoke detector somewhere because we just – and, you know, that planning came from way up top. Well, makes might, itself down as They might not plan. have had a plan, but that flexibility is what keeps me sane. My head doesn't blow up because I kind of knew it was going to happen. So I think in, right. in almost every facet of our work, but specifically in technical rescue, I think you should have a lot of flexibility. Lou, you guys, yep. you guys do some kind of technical rescue training every shift, don't you? We try to do some every shift. And how often does that actually happen? Mm, not a lot of the time. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be flexible. Out of, it, out of service training, <laughs> out of service training, and actually, uh, right. training is to I'd say two different things. But right. out of service training, we've been good about being able to get out of service and, and go train. But when we're in service and we try and do something, you better expect that bell to go off. Sure, um, or the phone or to something ring. to come up. Yeah, something to come or, up. Hey, we got to go you know, here and do this. Yeah. So, so um, seems like the bell is an expectation. Yeah. The bell is one you of those things it. where yeah. that should be part of the plan. Yeah, yeah that's and, part and of the station. <laughs> and that goes into what type of training we, we try and do that day. Right. If we're in service, like, okay, well, we can't commit to doing this. So let's, let's just start here. Let's do something basics, you know, something, get some reps on. Right. Um, or someone who's um, a fill in at the station, we try and fill them in on something basic on the trucks, getting off the truck, being prepared and just basic things like that. So, you kind of adjust your plan to, you know, not get interrupted. If you do get interrupted, you have some versatility there. Right. So, so I got a question. You got a newcomer that's getting ready to go to the Department Special Operations Division, the Heavy Rescue Squad or whatever. Bruno would say, plan for blank. Prepare for blank. Plan to get made fun of. <laughs> and prepare to cry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good, <laughs> <laughs> Very good advice there. <laughs> yeah. prepare, to cry. prepare for some tears and plan to be made fun of. But yeah, it sounds like a <laughs> prepare for the podcast because that's pretty accurate to us too. Yeah, no, just plan on a lot of time spent, you know, focusing on learning it, and then you know the prepare mentally to be able to be humble and very self aware of what you are strong and aren't. Be, don't be afraid to fail, you know, very it, self-aware. That another interesting point. We had uh, something that just recently happened, like two days ago happened. Very impromptu that I uh, were out there doing something unrelated. I'm like, hey, guys, let's do this. Uh, a quick drill competition type deal. You're sitting back preparing what you're going to do. And you think, oh, I got this. And then when it's your turn, you don't. <laughs> Uh, it goes back. The preparation part for for me can fail you a lot. Sure. Uh, actually, quite a bit. Planning, getting all that stuff together, and then oh, it, it's not working. Well, there's a danger in leading leaning heavily on preparation, just as there's a danger in leaving leaning heavily on a plan. Mm-hmm. If you there lean is, too heavily on your preparation and you're not really prepared, you know, oh, I've got this. Nope. I think like most things, though, it's a balance. It's a yeah, balance and absolutely. understanding the weaknesses of right. each one of them. 
I get the strength. Everybody almost always looks at the strength and they're defensively trying to, you know, I'm going to defend this side or the other where I understand the weaknesses of my planning and I understand the weaknesses of my preparation. To me, that balance is extremely helpful. Louis, if, if, do you have anybody that when, when I say, you know, who would you say is an absolute planner and just has no ability to be flexible? Do you have anybody Ooh. that pops in? You don't need Oof. no names, but do you have somebody that pops in your mind? Yeah. Does everybody else at the table? <laughs> oh, I thought you said, is it anybody at the table? No, 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 no. <laughs> but I mean, I, I have yeah. the same thing. Yeah. I, I know somebody in my head that I'm like, that person is just, once they've got a plan, there's no getting okay, around. Okay, so, yeah. and Louis, if that pl- don't go to that plan, you can tell it frazzles them pretty quick. Yeah. 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 So, and then what happens? Right. What feelings, happens to that or, person? Well, I mean, but what what happens on scene if it's, you know, are they that person that, um, you know, in that quote, you know, where we we think we're going to overcome it with effort, right? Well, you're just not trying hard enough, right. you know. And right. at what point does that person get written off? At what point does somebody step in and go, you know what, I'm going to take over? Mm-hmm. That tough one. Would you agree that the key is? balance between the, Absolutely. the two. I, I am a huge proponent of a gray world. It's not one <laughs> one or the other. It can't be all plan and it can't be all preparation. It's a it's a very much a sliding scale, just like the democracy. I'm looking at Hatch. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Bruno, you got a war for a uh, war story for us? War stories? Not really. Okay. Also, I don't think I've experienced all, that. all his calls. I'm not, tell him to be ready for that. You I've had minor uh, battles. I, I haven't, maybe I haven't had, had the more. wars. <laughs> all right, so we got some questions for you. Okay. Uh, what is the your favorite word or phrase on the fire ground? Smoke in the sky. Smoke in the sky? Yeah. That's actually not even on the fire ground. That's before you get to the fire ground. Right. right? Yeah, I've never heard that before. Is it, well, I mean, that, but we all know what he's talking about. Is that like a yeah. is that yeah, a had, uh, Is that what? So I had a captain who, uh, you know, uh, before anyone got to the scene, he knew it was working because you know he came over the radio and keyed up and said, you know, we got smoke in the sky. Okay, and uh, so everyone kind of was like, all right, here we go. Uh, I think I always have heard header. Yeah, 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 yeah awesome. that, but we got a header, but. Yeah, you like you like words. Us. Yeah, he had a way with okay. words. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your least favorite word or phrase on the fire ground? Uh, going defensive. <laughs> <laughs> Knew it. <laughs> uh, engine or truck? Heavy rescue. I knew that was kind of like, <laughs> choice. Um, oh, I, I you, you can't. I like. I enjoy them all. I really do. Like you can't pick one or the other. I know there's engine guys and there's truck guys, but. I love going top side on a truck, doing top side work, but I like being on the nozzle as well. Mm. I know, lame answer. It is no, lame answer. <laughs> you're, you're doing exactly what we're, we're trying to force you to make a decision in black and white. But you're trying yeah. to do that balance thing you're right. talking yeah. about. Yeah. Sucks. I, like, I like doing it all. <laughs> if I could do it all, I would. What motivates you? Uh, having fun. I mean, uh, if you're uh, doing this job and you're not having fun at it, then I don't think you belong here. Right. <laughs> oh, that's a good way to put that too. Uh, what's your favorite book? Not a big reader. I own a lot of books. <laughs> <laughs> they but, uh, balance out my coffee what's, table. What's actually, your favorite book to look at? I would actually prefer to <laughs> write my own book one day. But, uh, uh, that's a. That's I'd be a, more of like. Do you want to write your own book? A writer, not a reader. Somebody from your department would write their own book. Hey, we have one. It's happened. <laughs> <laughs> Happened a couple times, but uh, actually, it's very auspicious, though. I mean, to, I actually, to do that, it's a pretty big deal. Yeah, I would prefer to like, kind of like watching a game versus playing a game. I would rather participate than to sit back and watch. So when I it's all done, a lot. when it's all done, you're gonna write a book. I want to know maybe, what you're gonna even, write about. Not even when it's all done. Maybe <clears throat> maybe sooner than that. Hopefully, but. it seems like you'd have a lot to write about. Just on, even on your on yeah, your I trips mean, with and all adventures, the, with all the war stories that you've laid on. I know today. Right. it won't be about war stories. <laughs> Being a man about town, <laughs> that's my that's favorite. That's my favorite. But uh, <laughs> no, I did read one off of your uh, recommended reading list, and it was the one, um, the tunnel that they dug. Oh, oh yeah. Um, um, that one was really interesting. Golly, what's that called? I can't even remember it now. Yeah. 
I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't remember the. It's the, in Boston, right? Yeah, I don't yeah. remember the name of the book though. But um, like I said, I hadn't read a book in a while, and that one really. Uh, so that was I a, started reading it, and it, it it just sucked me in. That's a great book on yes. plan and prepare and preparation because they had a plan, and Absolutely. it all goes to hell, and people die. Yep, and it you know it also works in all those other things that go into any type of big scenario like that where you know budget and money become a thing yeah. and a personal opinion and politics and and, and unproven technology like say, and a lot of a lot of small um things that get overlooked in the beginning yep. that end in catastrophe so yep. all those little it's a death mm-hmm. by a thousand cuts and it's all those was that ones. one of your books yeah shane's looking it up um I, I, you you thinned yours down though i bet you took it off no i didn't i haven't thinned anything i thought you'd read more it's at the bottom <laughs> <laughs> keep going you're, as it keeps scrolling you're in the leadership <laughs> stuff <laughs> It's in the books. Oh, it's in the leadership uh, section of his yeah. list. <laughs> oh, I forgot he had sections. Bill has sections? <laughs> exactly. Keep going. Uh, there Trapped you go. Under the sea. Trapped under the sea. Yeah, that's that was a great one. Yeah, yeah that was a... That and it's, really it's not... One. I mean, it has nothing to do with firefighting, but no. it, it is everything wow. about, uh, like you said, that, that thing where right. all of the... It, and it's just like whether it's uh, the Sofa Superstore or any other... Horrible catastrophe, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Worcester or anything in the fire service where it's not one thing that led to this thing. It's a bunch of small things right. that just pile up until you can't overcome them. Right. Yeah, that's a good book. Yeah, it was like a good the one. Deep Survival. Huh? I bet you'd like Deep Survival. You probably would. Yeah. Deep Survival is a good one. Into Thin Air is yeah. a good one. Deep Survival I is. I did uh, Into Thin Air yeah. during that. Um, oh, oh, yeah, because you were. Yeah, actually, was a leadership. Mission Center. So, yeah. Mark. That was a great book, too. Yeah. Mark Smith. Uh, who was with Mission Centered Solutions gave me Deep Survival, and it, it basically is a book about why people live and why people die okay. in, in situations. Yeah. So, oh, that's a good all one. right, back to the questions. <laughs> <laughs> what profession would you most uh, want to do if you weren't a firefighter? Hockey player. Uh, yeah, hockey player. <laughs> or uh, you know, I like to be like like Anthony Bourdain. You know, just get paid to travel and eat uh, food, and see culture. Yeah, yeah he's a anything. Weird stuff, anything though. traveling, um, I'm in. So where's your next? Uh, you, you said you Alaska. had a trip planned to Alaska, but what's yeah. what's the one after that? Uh, I would like to do Bali, but it, right oh. now everything's so limited with right. COVID. So, um, you know, just depends where. I think South America, maybe go okay. do some hiking up there. Okay. Uh, if you were going to be introduced as the keynote speaker at FDIC, what song would they introduce you with? No music. Just no come music. out to dead no silence. Dead silence. <laughs> Wow, no that's a sounds. first. That is a statement yeah. right there. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what. Yeah. No music. <laughs> Awfully confident. Yeah. Like He'd be awesome. Be like, <laughs> just a creaking door. Yeah. Hey. And, and steps across yeah. the stage. You clop, get everybody's mind clop, ready. Clop. You know, <laughs> kind of psychs everybody out. <laughs> yep, I don't know if I'm more bothered expecting. by the fact that it took you no time to do that, and most people would stumble on this one, <laughs> and you were just like, yeah, dead silence. <laughs> 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 I'm a serial killer. It's okay. I, I would think I've always thought about that. Like if I were a boxer and I came out, everyone's got the music, but. You get that one assassin that just goes in there with exactly. no music. <laughs> yeah. You know you got something to worry about. He's got no music and he's coming out. All business. So he's going to be keynote speaker and he's playing mind games with the audience right from the get go. I own every one of that's you. That's it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, that's right. awesome. That's your retirement. How do you want to be remembered? Other than psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a, uh, I guess, um, someone who was able to pass something on. Um, to keep a uh, firemanship alive. Um, I think that it's not a lot of people are staying until their full careers anymore. So to keep um, all of the, all the nuances that go with being a fireman, um, I'd like to be able to contribute to keep those alive. So some way, one way or the other. That's a good answer. Yeah. Uh, if you could go back and give your rookie self one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, enjoy every moment because I said I'm still only eight years and I see it as nothing compared to a full career but um, eight years has gone by fast for me so I I embrace everything and enjoy everything there's a lot of little things I missed that but um, for the most part I've had an excellent career for so far couldn't ask for a better path yeah I think the enjoyment part or the fun part 
yeah it really have helps fun. it helps it go fast and mm-hmm. it, it really helps you know you enjoying the the whole process and i think a lot of people get caught up in some of the negativity that can sure. fester in a firehouse yeah so that's a good point and it's okay to listen to that but you can't get caught up right in it otherwise it's just going to take you down a dark hole yeah um, but you have to listen you have to listen to it and i think going back you know ears open mouth shut pretty basic all right all right well, 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 we really appreciate you being on. Uh, thanks again, Louis Bruno. Yeah. And um, we've already done our well, so we'll catch you next time. <laughs> this is where I screw up and say something and Bill gets pissed. <laughs> or you start a whole new topic. And Literally, like, it was like five seconds. He can't, he can't, he can't help himself. Sorry. He can't help himself. <laughs> you said something a second ago. I'm all about tradition here, boys. All about tradition. <laughs> oh my God, it's so hard awful. to edit. So hard to edit. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs>Combustible is available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Amazon, and everywhere else you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to Combustible to make sure you don't miss out on an episode. Follow us on Facebook so we know how many of you listeners there are out there. And you can check us out online at combustiblethepodcast.com. As always, we would like to thank the Golden Dogs and True North Records for letting us use their song Saints at the Gates for our theme music. You can find the Golden Dogs music on any streaming platform. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you later.